This thing you are looking at is my Lenovo ThinkPad X230. This model was announced by Lenovo at a CES show in January 2012, but it only started shipping in late May, early June 2012, which makes it almost exactly 10 years old. Many consider it to be the last great X-series ThinkPad, and in this video I will show you everything about this laptop and why it is considered a cult classic by ThinkPad enthusiasts. As you can see, this laptop looks very similar to other ThinkPads, it's black and rectangular. The display cover and the base of the laptop are made of magnesium alloy. They have the same rubberized coating as other premium ThinkPads. The palm rest, the screen bezel and the trim piece around the keyboard are made of sturdy black plastic. You can see there is some wear on the touchpad. The palm rest also has quite a lot of shine to it, but that's kinda expected after 10 years of use. Even though it was one of the smallest laptops in Lenovo's lineup at the time, it's not really small and light by modern standards. It has basically the same footprint as my 13-inch MacBook Pro and is about twice as thick. The X230 with a standard 6L battery weighs exactly 1.5 kilograms, which is actually heavier than most modern 14-inch laptops. But what this laptop lacks in thinness and lightness, it definitely makes up for in terms of its port selection, which is very generous. On the left hand side of the laptop, there is a USB 3.0 port, a VGA output, a mini display port output, an Express Card 54 slot, one more USB port, and a hardware wireless switch. On the right side, there is another USB port. This one is yellow, because it stays powered even when the laptop itself is turned off, so you can use it to charge your phone or tablet. Above the USB port is the SD card reader, which is fully compatible with SDHC and SDXC cards. Many other laptops have goofy half-length SD card slots, where the memory card sticks out and you have to yank it out manually. But this one is a proper full-length slot with a latching mechanism, and the card sits almost flush with the surface of the laptop. Also on this side there is a gigabit Ethernet connector, and a combined headphone microphone jack, and frankly the location is a bit inconvenient. It would be much better if the Ethernet port was located towards the back of the laptop, especially considering that Ethernet cables tend to be somewhat stiff. There are no ports on the front side of the laptop, and on the back there is only the power connector. And if you think that there are not enough ports on the laptop itself, you can get the optional UltraBase Series 3 dock. I got this one new in box, including keys, for just 15 euro off eBay. The dock has four more USB ports, VGA, full-size display port, gigabit Ethernet, separate microphone in and headphone out, and the power connector. On the right hand side of the dock there is a compartment for an optical drive. The only downside of this docking station is that all four of its USB ports support only USB 2.0 speeds, because it was originally designed for the ThinkPad X220, which does not support USB 3.0. Unlike most modern laptops, the ThinkPad X230 has a removable battery. This one still has its original battery pack, which was made in September 2012, and amazingly it still retains about 70% of its original capacity. Here you can see that it was made for Lenovo by Sanyo Electric, and this was before Sanyo was bought by Panasonic. Cell Origin Japan This is a 6-cell battery, which was originally rated for about 10 hours of battery life. There was also a larger 9-cell battery, which actually sticks out from the back of the laptop, and it was rated for up to 15 hours of battery life. Of course, if you read contemporary reviews, those figures were largely dismissed as fiction. With my tired battery, I'm lucky to get 4 hours of use. Also under the battery, you can see the SIM card slot for the optional 3G modem. 
ThinkPad X to 30 was the first ThinkPad to use the modern style chiclet keyboard. Call me crazy, but I actually prefer it to classic ThinkPad keyboards. It is a dream to type on. The keys have a comparatively long travel and the typing feel is extremely nice. It's crisp and tactile, with no mushiness at the end of the keystroke. The ThinkPad X to 30 could be supplied with a backlit or non-backlit keyboard. This one is not backlit, but the laptop still has the famous Think Light, which is a small LED hidden in the screen bezel, which shines down on the keyboard, just enough to illuminate it. It can be activated by pressing the function key together with the space bar. The laptop has a rather small touchpad with integrated buttons. It supports some rudimentary multi-touch gestures, like double finger scrolling, but otherwise it's pretty awful. Thankfully, you don't have to use it, because there is also a track point, also known as the nipple mouse. You use it by moving the stick with your index finger and press the buttons with your thumb. The middle button is used for scrolling. Using the track point feels rather strange at first, but after several days it becomes pretty natural. Another advantage of the track point is that you don't have to move your hand from the home row to use it. ThinkPad X230 is equipped with a 12-inch widescreen LCD. The resolution is 1366 by 768, which is rather low by modern standards, and actually limits the laptop's usefulness quite a bit. In my opinion, you cannot comfortably work with two documents at the same time on this laptop without using an external display. By default, this model came with a horrible TN plus film screen, which is very dim and has no viewing angles to speak of. It was also possible to order it with an optional IPS display, which was noticeably brighter and had excellent viewing angles. This particular laptop came with a TN plus film display, which I replaced with an IPS panel myself. I used exactly the same panel as was used by Lenovo, and it actually came with a Lenovo sticker on the back. It's not the best display in the world, and it has some minor issues with image retention, but it is at least 100 times better than the original TN Plus film screen. Above the display, there is a webcam, but its quality is rather impressionistic, for lack of a better word. Another thing worth mentioning are the hinges. The attention is absolutely perfect. They hold the screen in place very firmly, but at the same time, you can open and close the lid easily. The hinges also appear to be very durable, because they don't show any signs of stress even after 10 years of use. One of the biggest upsides of ThinkPad X230 is its expandability and upgradability. This cover on the bottom hides two RAM slots, so upgrading the RAM is extremely easy. It is even easier than on its larger sister model, the T430, because on the T430 the second RAM slot is under the keyboard. By the way, X230 was the last ThinkPad X series laptop to feature two RAM slots. The next model, X240, had only one RAM slot, and the RAM was running in the single-channel mode, which really hurt its performance compared to the X230. All subsequent models, up to and including X270, use the same design as the X240, with just one RAM slot. And in the final 12-inch model, X280, Lenovo removed the last remaining memory slot and started soldering RAM chips to the motherboard. And today, there are no thin and light ThinkPads in Lenovo's lineup that have user-upgradable RAM. The storage on the X230 is also easy to upgrade. Remove just one screw to free up the cover, and the drive simply slides out. In fact, the whole device is like a Lego set, easy to take apart and put together again. I mentioned that I have upgraded the display myself, and it took me just 15 minutes from start to finish. The same applies to the keyboard, cooling fan, motherboard, and other components. I doubt you will find a modern laptop that is so easy to upgrade and repair. Lenovo even has a comprehensive manual covering all aspects of the hardware maintenance process. ThinkPad X230, similar to other ThinkPads, was available in a bunch of different configurations. 
it included dual-core 3rd-gen Intel Core i5 or Core i7 CPUs, 4 or 8 GB of RAM, which was upgradable to 16 GB, and a standard 2.5-inch hard drive or solid-state drive, as well as dual-band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a webcam. There was also a budget model called ThinkPad X230i, which came with a Core i3 CPU and no webcam, Bluetooth, or 3G. The laptop includes a slot for an optional 3G modem, which could also be used for an mSATA SSD. And back in the day, many users actually used a small mSATA SSD for the operating system and a large hard drive for their data. Of course, today it does not make a lot of sense because you can simply buy a large capacity SSD pretty cheaply. In contrast with later models, the X30 uses regular CPUs with a TDP of 35 watts. This is why it was actually faster than its direct successors that used low voltage CPUs rated at only 15 watts. I would say that even today its performance is more than acceptable for many tasks, such as web browsing or office work. Obviously, it is slower than modern laptops that have 4 or more CPU cores, but it runs Windows 10 with ease. It's also perfect for running Linux. In fact, many call this model the perfect Linux laptop, because its hardware is very well supported. The biggest weakness of the X230 is video playback, especially on YouTube. Its GPU does not support hardware decoding of the video formats used by YouTube, which means that the laptop gets quite hot and playing 1080p videos, not to mention 4K. Since this laptop is 10 years old, you cannot buy it new, but because it was so popular back in the day, they can be found pretty easily. There are even companies that specialized in refurbishing and selling used ThinkPads. In fact, mine came from one of such companies, as indicated by the sticker on the bottom. But of course the main question is, does it actually make any sense to buy a 10-year-old laptop? And the answer as usual is, it depends. If you look on eBay, you will find a lot of these laptops between 100 and 150 euro. But these inexpensive configurations typically have just 4 gigabytes of RAM, a mechanical hard drive and a TN screen. Configurations with more RAM, solid-state storage and an IPS screen tend to be more expensive. People usually try to flog them for at least 300 euro. And at this price, this laptop does not make a lot of sense, because you can buy a newer model with much better specs for a similar amount of money. For example, I paid only 270 euro for my T480S that came with a Full HD IPS screen, 16 GB of RAM and a very fast PCI Express SSD. But maybe it would be less expensive to get a cheap one and upgrade it? Let's do a full breakdown. When I bought my ThinkPad X30, I found the cheapest one on eBay and ordered it. It cost me 100 euro including shipping. It was pretty beat up, but fully functional. It came with 4 GB of RAM and a small solid state drive. It also came with this keyboard that the seller has described as refinished. As you can see, the surface of the keys was repainted and relabeled. This new glossy finish does not look good. It also feels so sleek to the touch that it's almost like typing on a piece of butter. It is also an ISO layout with a vertical enter key and a small left shift. After using this keyboard for a couple of days, I decided to replace it with an ANSI keyboard which has Russian legends in addition to English. Despite being a Russian speaker, I don't actually need Russian legends because I am a touch typist, but this keyboard was only half the price of a US English one, which sealed the deal. I was lucky to get an original battery that was still in decent condition, and I don't really use this laptop on battery power very often, but if you plan on actually using it as a mobile computer, you should definitely get a new battery. Last time I checked, Duracell Direct was still selling aftermarket batteries for this model in Europe. After using this laptop for a while, I like it so much that I decided to upgrade it to the maximum, so it now has 16 GB of RAM and a 1 TB SSD, in addition to the aforementioned IPS screen and a new keyboard. And the grand total was 300 euro. 
So, in my opinion, getting an X-30 in 2022 makes sense only if you don't plan to upgrade it and only want to own one as a historical artifact. Or if you are a free software fan and want to have a laptop with a free and open source BIOS. I believe X-30 is one of the last ThinkPads to support Core Boot. Still, I really like my ThinkPad X-30 despite the fact that it is showing its age. And I will be sad when I have to retire it.